Welcome everyone. I'm Yang Wu, Open Resources Librarian at Clemson University Libraries in South Carolina. Since 2020, faculty and graduate student instructors at Clemson University's Department of Public Health Sciences, with support from Clemson University Libraries, have engaged upper level undergraduates in their classes to write openly licensed e-textbooks on different aspects of public health as research projects. Students in their courses have created a growing number of openly licensed publications. Which are intended for other undergraduates in their department and the general public. This presentation looks at the innovative and transformative nature of open textbook writing on student learning from the perspective of both students and instructors. The openly licensed textbooks allow students to have a much more collaborative approach to working in a classroom than a traditional college class. It really encourages them to work as a team in developing each of their chapters. It allows them to be way more involved in the research aspects of creating the text than in a traditional paper or traditional writing. As well as in public health, a lot of what we do is health education to the general public. And so it's really important for them to learn those communication skills early. And so by using this type of approach in a classroom, it allowed them to develop those health communication skills to be able to take them into their future careers. Applying strategies from open pedagogy, open textbook writing makes up the bulk of a health science course. It starts in the second week of the semester and continues until finals week. Writing an open textbook is a process that involves six scaffolded steps, combining student collaboration and individual work. Students work together in deciding the larger contents and theme of the book and the target audience, doing elevator pitches on potential topics to be included in the book. They develop and write individual chapters based on the theme of the book, ultimately submitting three drafts. Students add new content to their draft such as images and infographics, questions and exercises for the readers, etc. after each submission. They also receive training on quality writing and communication strategies, as well as finding copyright friendly images and how to write for specific audiences after each draft. And they are assigned to peer edit each other's writings. Students upload finalized chapters into the Pressbooks online publishing platform at the end of the term. Open textbook writing is mixed with content learning through lectures, group discussions, and guest speakers, allowing students to learn about the larger course topic as they develop their chapters. So for the Pressbook class projects, we started with short elevator pitches to see the range of topics possible for the book. Can you describe that process and how determining content early assisted in the creation of the textbook? Yeah, so going into the elevator pitches, I was actually kind of nervous about it because I knew that that was going to be a topic that I was spending a pretty big chunk of the semester focusing on and researching. So before I gave my elevator pitch, I did a lot of research actually, more than I thought that I would going into it because I wanted to have a really good handle on it. And for me personally, I chose the topic of nicotine because I knew that that was something that is like a really big issue right now. So I thought that, that would be important to include in the book. And seeing the wide range of topics really early on was helpful for us creating the book and going into picking a big theme for the book, especially because there were so many topics that were discussed in a really wide range. 
And I think it was important to include all of those things in some way, but it was also really helpful for us to get a feel of what our classmates were thinking about talking about as well. After the elevator pitches were done, we placed all the ideas in a Google sheet and discussed a book theme, and then the target audience was determined. How did you decide on your chapter topic? Yeah, so for the elevator pitch, I chose a very broad topic, and that's what I presented on. But after we came together as a class and we figured out what we wanted our target audience to be and also what we wanted the theme of our book to be, that really helped me narrow down what I wanted to talk about throughout my chapter. Talking about everything there is to know about a single drug just really isn't feasible in a small chapter. So knowing who I'm trying to talk to, who I'm trying to get the message across to, and also knowing the context of what I'm trying to say that in really helped for me to narrow down my topic and choose it in the end. So before submitting each draft, you were grouped with a peer to review work. Explain why peer review was helpful in developing each draft. Yeah, so there are definitely going to be mistakes that you make on each draft that you just don't catch because it's your writing. Um, there were a lot of things that I'm just comfortable writing about the subject. So I got used to definitions. I didn't realize the general public really didn't understand. So having a peer go over my work really helped with them saying like, hey, you made a grammatical error right here that I didn't realize. Or even things that they're like, you need to explain this more. It makes sense in your head, but it doesn't make sense when the reader's writing or reading your page. Um, so that was really helpful for just determining what I needed to maybe get a little bit more detailed on, what I maybe needed to cut out that kind of felt like fluff. And just having another pair of eyes just look at my work and say, here's what you should maybe change. After submitting the second draft, you read everyone else's chapter and gave feedback. Describe what you gained as a writer and as a student from that process. Yeah. Um, so it was really cool to just see what other people had been working on in their chapter. It's easy to get into a little writer's bubble and to kind of only concentrate on what you've been working on and to see other subjects that people were writing about and be able to read all the work that they had put into their chapter was really cool. Just to see that we were making this unified book, that we were actually going to do this thing um, and just to have an appreciation for all the work that everyone had put in. It was also super helpful for seeing areas that people had written in their book. And I was like, oh, I really like how they did that. Or seeing things that they took different approaches for approaching the audience, that type of thing. And also helped with seeing people say stuff that I was like, I feel like that can maybe be a little bit cohesive. I did this differently in my chapter. And by being able to line up on all of that and everyone reading the chapter together and putting in their input, we made the book feel a lot more unified and a lot more just cohesive, like everyone had talked, everyone knew what they needed to be doing, and it wasn't every individual person just doing their own thing, and then kind of a weird mix of chapters. So overall, I think it helped me learn how to um, write just overall in a, in a better way with other peer input, and helped me to learn how to work well with others and writing and just making something seem a little bit more um, cohesive. So for the second draft, you learned about the importance of copyright for images. How easy was it to find images to support your story? Yeah, so going in, I figured it was going to be very, very easy. I know there's thousands and thousands of pictures of whatever you can imagine on the internet, so I didn't think it would be an issue at all. But after learning about copyright, that really narrowed down the search. And I had an idea of what pictures I wanted going into it, and those ideas did have to change a little bit. However, I was able to find pictures that wove in great with my story, and I, I really liked how it ended up turning out, but it was something I was definitely surprised by, and it was something that definitely needs to be taken into account how important it is when you're writing your chapter. So the final step before publication was class editing. Describe that collaboration that's required to complete a final product like this textbook. So since we had such a wide variety of people and topics for this book, it really required a lot of collaboration to get it to that final cohesive book. I know that since this was multiple chapters, multiple authors, we had to have everyone have a small editing duty so that everybody could get something done or else it would have been too much for any one person. I know for me personally, I was 
in charge of editing hyperlinks. So that would be hyperlinks to other chapters, to outside media, or even in references pages. And I really tried to help out my peers and edit things along the way that I saw that could help them, as well as editing copyright information for images as well. So overall, it was really necessary that we all work together and collaborate on what we thought needed to be edited, like reaching out to them and saying, hey, I don't think this makes sense here. Could you help me out with editing this? So I think that that was really important and it was a really good way to talk to our peers about how we thought the book would flow best. So explain why creating a book can help enhance health education for your target audience. Yeah, so I think creating a book is very helpful, first of all, for the people writing it, because in order to write that book, you have to have that much deeper of an understanding about what exactly you're saying. You can't just have a superficial understanding, because when you're writing, you have to be very intentional. In order for your target audience to actually learn, you have to not only say things in a succinct and concise way, but you also have to say them in a way that makes sense in a way that is true based on the research that you've done. One of the biggest skills that I gained from being in a class like this that will help me in my future endeavors is being able to read and interpret research. As someone who wants to go into the medical field, that's something that's very, very important. As medicine constantly is changing, you need to be able to keep up with what the most recent facts are. And more often than not, that comes in the form of complex research papers. So that's definitely a skill that I'm going to take with me into my future endeavors and definitely something very important that I learned from this class. Thank you, everyone. Please use the following links to see the works produced by Clemson students. And feel free to contact the following people, as well as myself, if you have any questions about our presentation, as well as our method of teaching.